A few videos ago, I found and killed every hostile mob in the game, but that got me thinking, would it be possible to farm every single mob? Well, we're about to find out, since today, I'm going to try to build a farm for each of the 34 hostile mobs, including the Wither, the Warden, and yes, even the Ender Dragon. But let's start with something a bit easier, and that's going to be... a drowned farm. It's literally just a box of water in the sky, but it looks like it's already working. Yeah, we have some copper and some Nautilus shells, and later on, we'll also be able to get some tridents from this too, but we're going to see how fast all these farms are at the end of the episode. And since we already have our first farm done, it's time to do the next one, and that's going to be a slime farm. I've always needed one of these in my world. I don't know why it took me so long to build one, but I'll grab some shulkers, and we'll start collecting all the materials. And that's everything that we'll need. Let's go build this farm now. It's going to go right over here in the swamp biome, and I'm going to start with the collection system down below first. Okay, here's all the hoppers, now for the campfires. And here we have it. Ouch. Okay, let's build the rest of this now. That's where all these slabs are going to come in handy, as well as all these blocks and my torches and fences. Okay, let's get to work. And here we are. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah, look, there's some right there. Nice. It's working. Let's go see if the collection system's working now. And it is. Look at that. We already have some slime balls. But that's the second farm all done, and that was fairly straightforward. So I'm just going to AFK up here for a little bit to get some slime balls, since we're going to need that for the third farm. Wait, and look at this. It's day one, two, three, four. <laughs> that is so cool. Let's go see how how many slimes we got. Okay, 45. Um, how much is that? Let's see. That's enough for five blocks. That should be good. All right, farm number two is done. It's time for farm number three. But before we do farm number three, it's also time for you to check and see if you're subscribed, since over 97% of people that watch my videos aren't. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please make sure to subscribe. But like I said before, it's time for farm number three, and I'm going to switch things up and do the warden farm next. I'm not going to follow any design for this farm, and I'm just going to build it all by myself. It's either going to be very very cool or very bad, but I already kind of have an idea in mind, so let's gather up a few materials to do this. Okay, I think we should be good. Wait, hold on. We're also going to need two observers and two note blocks. <laughs> okay, now I think we're good to go. Let's go do this. Now, right below this mountain is where I have my warden disabler, and I was thinking that I could turn that into a warden farm, since it already has everything set up to summon the wardens, so I should just be able to add a few things to it. Let's see. Yep, it's still working. We are going to have to turn it off, though, because it's going to get quite dark in here. I can't see anything. Now, inside of all this wool right here is a shrine. Shrieker, and this big cleared out area is so none of the wardens can spawn. So my idea is to build something on the side right here. That way some wardens can spawn on this. And then I'm going to use some slime blocks and sticky pistons to push them off into here. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we can at least try. Let's just place a bunch of melons down so the slime blocks don't stick to it. And then I'll place all my slime right here. Wow, five blocks was perfect. We'll do sticky piston like this. And then I think I'm going to do a repeater and some redstone coming off of this redstone block. And I'll run one more repeater like this. And now when we turn turn this on, this should power this piston. Let's see here. Okay, looks like it's working. I think I'm gonna have to add some delay though. Actually, wait, I think an observer off of this might be better. Let's put an observer facing into this block and then some redstone coming off of it with a repeater. I just added a little bit more delay since I think it needs more time for the warden to spawn. Let's see. Yeah, this should be working. Okay, let's turn this off now though. And then I'm gonna grab some water out of here and I'll build up a little collection system down here. This is where we're gonna collect all the wardens. I can't believe I'm doing this. Right here, I'll place down some blue ice. And then right in here, I'll place down some soul sand. Something like this. Then I'm also going to place down some glass so we can see all the wardens getting sucked up. Now we're just going to have to build a massive bubble elevator. Since I think what I want to do is send these wardens all the way up to the build limits. And then have them drop all the way back down and fall to their death. And I'm actually not 100% sure if they can survive the fall. So I brought some pointed dripstone with me just in case. So let's write down the coordinates of these four blocks. And then I'll fly up to the surface to dig down to build our drop chutes. And it's going to be these four blocks right here. Oh, we're here. That took way less time than I was expecting. Nice. All right, now that we have the drop shoot all dug out, we're just going to have to build all of it up with glass. Okay, I made it all the way up to build height. This is so ridiculous. But now that we're up here, I'm going to place some stairs like this. Now we have to build some walls on it like this. And then right over here is going to be the drop shoot. So let's finish this part up here real quick going to go something like this. And now I should be able to place down some water. Let's see. Yeah, it's working. Okay, we're just going to have to go get some kelp real quick since we need to turn all of that into a bubble column. Here's our kelp. I'm only going to need four pieces. And then we'll head back down to our ancient city, which is right down here. Okay, and the water made it all the way down. Nice. Let's place down our kelp now. And now we'll just start bone mealing it. There we go. Everything is all grown. Okay, we should be able just to break this now. And let's see if it works. And yeah, it's working. Nice. This is so funny. <laughs> this is going to be the most ridiculous farm. But let's just place two water sources right here here. And this is going to push the wardens off into the drop chute. So let's build that portion next. 
and there we go it's all done and now let's test this thing out i'm not sure if i'm gonna need pointed dripstone but let's test it without first that might end up being a very bad idea but let's just see let's put a bunch of arrows into here and then we can turn it on okay i'm hearing angry warden noises let's see oh it's working oh and he got pushed okay let's see is he gonna get sucked up into there? Oh, wait, I forgot something kind of important. Um, hold on. Let's turn this off real quick, and I'll explain what it is after we get this guy to go away. Oh, wait, he went up. Did he? Hold on. Wait a minute. Yeah, look, he's going up. Wait, he's falling back down. <gasps> okay, he didn't die. Um, wait a minute. This might be bad. Oh, wait, he's just stuck in there, though. Um, hmm. How am I gonna get rid of this guy? I'm very scared. What if I just snipe him with my bow? Let's see. Okay, so he's mad at me. I'm not sure if he can reach me with his sonic boom, though, but let's just snipe him. Okay, we killed him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he didn't have too much health left after that big drop. Um, but let's test it out with pointed dripstone now. I really hope it works with pointed dripstone. I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't. Okay, let's place some right here, and we'll try again. Let's spam some arrows into here, and we'll turn it back on. Okay, this is the stupidest farm ever, but it is very fun, though. Anyone gonna spawn? Hello? Okay, yep, it worked. And he got pushed. Oh, but I forgot the important thing again. Oh, gosh. I guess we'll see if he gets drawn up in there anyways. Oh, I'm making noise. Oh, there's a zombie. Oh, and he got sent up. Okay, a zombie's gonna get sent up there too. Oh, there's multiple spawning. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta turn this thing off because I'm not even sure if it's gonna work yet. Let's turn it off real quick. And I literally can't see anything. It's like too dark. Okay, are you gonna go up? Yep, there he goes. <laughs> okay, let's see if this works now though. Okay, yeah, here he comes, here he comes. Let's see, is it gonna work? Oh, it works. Okay, nice. I'm so glad that actually worked. This is the goofiest farm. Look at all these skull catalysts we're getting. But like I said before, we forgot something pretty important. And it's gonna go right down here. I'm gonna have to grab two observers and two no blocks. Since basically when they get pushed into here, they get attracted to this piston and then they don't go up the water stream. So I think a no block with some observers down here should do the trick. That way it'll draw them towards the water stream. Okay, they're both being powered and I'll place down one no block and two no blocks. Nice. Okay, let's see if that contraption works. Let's turn the farm back on one more time. And let's see here. Okay, a warden is spawning. He got pushed in. And he should be attracted to that no block now. Yep, he's being attracted to it. He should start walking towards it now. There he goes. Okay, nice. But now that we know that it works, let's build up the collection system. That's going to be with all these hopper minecarts and hoppers. Let's see, how can I do this? I think underneath these blocks, I'm going to place some hopper minecarts. And maybe I'll place some hoppers right here. Those will serve to collect the items. Okay, two chests are going to go Go right here and then i'll put some hoppers in like this and now we're gonna have to place some hopper minecarts on top of here i think that should be fine we'll place pistons facing down like this there we go i'll reposition all of our hopper minecarts and then we'll place down some blocks and we'll power these pistons okay it worked. Nice. Now there's hopper minecarts inside of these blocks. So that's going to allow us to place some pointed dripstone on top of here. And then if I drop something on top of this pointed dripstone, then it should get picked up. Nice. Yeah, it's working. Perfect. All right. So let's just extend this glass a little bit now. And everything should be working. But there we have it. Our warden farm is all done. I never thought I would actually build one of these. But I had quite a fun time. And I think it was also pretty fun trying to design it myself as well. I don't usually design farms entirely by myself. And I think this is a pretty good example as to why I don't do that. But for a simple farm like this, it was actually pretty fun. Farm number three is done. It's time for farm number four. And this one should be a little bit more useful than our warden farm. And that's gonna be a phantom farm. While not extremely useful, phantom membranes are used for potions and to repair your elytra, so it's not gonna be entirely useless. But let's empty out all the stuff I have in these shulker boxes, and we'll start collecting up all the items that we'll need for it. It is a pretty simple farm, so we should be able to build it super fast. To build it, we're just gonna need some white stained glass, some fence gates, some mangrove trap doors. You'll see why it has to be mangrove later. Then I'm also gonna need a door, some iron bars, and lastly, four buckets of water. Okay, let's go build this thing. <laughs> Look at our wardens. <laughs> That looks so funny. I'm so glad we have this in the world. And I'm really glad I made it out of glass too, because just seeing the wardens getting thrown up and then shot down is so funny. But let's focus our attention on the phantom farm, and I'm going to build it right over here. This phantom farm has to be used basically as you AFK, and this is already the AFK spot for all of my farms down here, so I think it's going to be the perfect spot to build this thing. But we're just going to have to remove this old AFK platform. And we're also going to have to build everything one block lower. But this is basically the entire farm all done. We're just going to have to place some water on top of here now. Also, by the way, if you want to build any of the farms that I'm building in this world, I'll have them all linked in the description. Every single farm except for the Warden farm was designed by somebody else. So if you want to see a tutorial for how it's built or build it in your own world, everything is linked down in the description. But that's the Phantom farm all done. This thing was super easy to build. Let's see if it works now. We're just going to have to come in here, close this door, and step on top of here. And also, this is why the spruce trap door is important 
items so I can see down at my creeper farm. But let's see if any phantoms spawn now. Oh, wait, no, I slept during a thunderstorm. I forgot. So there's not going to be any phantom spawning. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm not going to sleep for the next few days. And then once we get phantom spawning, then we'll test this thing out. But that's the fourth farm all done. So let's build the fifth farm. And this one's going to be a bit of a combo farm since it's going to be an all mob farm. And wait, hold on. There's more wardens. <laughs> I love that farm. But as I was saying, it's going to be an all mob farm. So it's going to farm skeletons, creepers, spiders, zombies. And I'm also going to build it in a desert biome. So it's also going to farm husks. Since husks are part of all the mobs that we have to farm today. But this is going to be a much bigger farm than what we just built. So it's going to take a little bit to get all the materials for it. Okay, this is everything that we'll need. Let's go build this thing. It's going to go right over here in the desert biome. Since I also want to be able to farm husks from this as well. Even though husks give you like exactly the same thing as zombies. But it's fine. We're farming every mob today. Today, so I mean literally every mob. Even the useless ones like husks and silverfish. And yes, we are building a silverfish farm later. But right here should be a pretty good spot to build it. I think I'll do it right on top of here. So let's place down all my materials. And we'll start with the collection system. Okay, nice. And we'll place down hoppers into all of them. And then we'll fly on top of here. We're gonna expand it like this. And there we go. That's the shape of the collection system. All right, now on top of here, we're gonna place some soul campfires. And now we're gonna have to gather up all of our slabs. And I mean all of them. And now we're gonna have to start building. There's going to be slabs over here like this. This is going to be where the spires can die. And it's also a space so they can't climb out as well. So let's just build that up real quick. But this is the first part of the farm all done. So now we just have to build up the collection area. It's basically just going to be a giant circle with some water inside of it. Wait, there's phantoms. Did we test the phantom farm? I think we should. Hold on. Let's go test it real quick. Let's fly all the way back to the phantom farm and let's see if it works. We're going to head inside of here, go on top of here, and I'll wait for some phantoms to spawn. Uh, hello, phantoms. Oh, they're spawning. Let's see. Is it going to work? Hold on. He should just fly in here and then get stuck in the water. Let's see. Okay. And look at that. Now we can hit him. This is so cool. <laughs> and there we go. Nice. The phantom farm works. Yeah, they just get trapped right here. This is so good. Now we have a very easy way to get phantom membranes. Hello. Thank you. Okay. Well, we tested that. So now let's sleep and we'll keep working on the all mob farm now. All right. So now we just have to build the circuitry on top to power the farm. And it's just going to be a fairly straightforward hopper clock. Something like this. Let's see here. Should be able to place some items into here. Yeah. And it's working. Nice. I think 16 items should be perfect. Oh, and also one thing I forgot to mention, I slightly modified the design of this farm to make it compatible with husk spawning. Since husks are kind of weird and they can only spawn when exposed to the sky. So this top layer right here is going to be our husk layer. So now the only thing we have left to do is to pillar up and build the AFK platform, which will be this. Now let's see here. Yeah, I already see some mobs falling, but we are going to have to wait until nighttime to have some husks spawn. So now we wait. Okay, it's properly nighttime now. Let's see. Okay, there are things spawning up here. So far, no husks, though. This is making me slightly worried. I really hope this works. I don't want to have to build a husk farm. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Okay, we got a husk. Nice. So it does work. Amazing. Okay. How much stuff do we have? Wow. Okay. This farm actually works really good. Much better than I was expecting, to be honest. But that's the fifth farm all done. This is number five, right? I'm pretty sure. Now, since we've built so many farms, and there's also a bunch of different mobs associated with them, let's make a book to keep track of everything. Because I'm not even sure how many more mobs we have to farm. So this book will be good to keep track of it. Okay, after a bit of time, here's the book with all the mobs in it. But as I was writing all this out, I realized that a few of these are going to be impossible possible to build farms for. The first one is the Elder Guardian, since once you kill one of those, then they never respawn. So I have no idea how you would build a farm. I'm pretty sure it's impossible. And then next up is an Endermite. While I could probably build a farm for it, you have to throw a ton of Ender Pearls to get Endermites to spawn, so it would probably end up killing me. So that one's also going to be impossible. And there's one more one that's impossible, and it's the Piglin Brutes. Since Piglin Brutes spawn in with the Bastion structure, and once you kill them, they also never respawn. Same thing like the Elder Guardian, but that's not too bad. There's only three impossible farms and all the rest of these are possible. But now that we've determined which farms are possible, let's cross off the ones that we've already done. And I'm also going to count ones that I already have as well, since there's no point in building two of the same farm. Okay, but that still leaves us with quite a few farms left to build. And I think up next, I'm going to build the Guardian farm. This one's going to be one of the most useful ones, I think. But let's start gathering up all the materials. I'm going to need loads of dirt, even more soul sand. We'll also need some white stained glass, obsidian, and everything else. Let's go build this farm now. Next to the that desert farm that we just built, there's a giant ocean, and there should be some ocean monuments inside. Let's see if I can find any. Okay, yeah, there's one right here. Nice. It's super close to the mob farm. I'm trying to keep all these farms relatively close to my house, because then I'll never use them if they're too far away. Oh, yeah, and we've already been to this one, too, which is good. Wait, oh, these guys do a lot of damage. Ouch. Oh, please go away. Okay, but the first step is to remove all the seagrass and kelp from on top of the monument. So let's do that real quick. 
Okay, we're good to go. Nice. Now we're just gonna have to get rid of all the prismarine on top of here. Just these little individual blocks. Okay, and now we can start building. I'm gonna go inside of here to seek shelter. There's too many guardians outside. Okay, let's grab up my materials now. I'm gonna need lots of soul sand and lots of dirt, as well as my obsidian, fence gates, glass, and stone. Okay, first step is to build the portals in the center. Oh my gosh, these guys are destroying me. Ooh, okay, hold on. Guardians do a surprising amount of damage, to be honest. So let's quickly build up these portals. Ow, oh my gosh. I need like a resistance beacon for this. This is insane. Okay, but now we just have to build up the portals and then connect them up like this. Okay, but now we have to place down a bunch of dirt to get this water to flow in the way that we want. It's gonna look something like this. And this has the added benefit of protecting me from those guardians. But now we're gonna come all the way around the edge like this and place down some glass. Okay, and then I've also gone ahead and added fence gates in all the corners and water on top of everything. That's basically the main part of the farm all done. So now all we have to do is grab my flint and steel and light these portals. And we should be able to go through now. Let's see, please work. Okay, nice. Now on this side is where we're gonna kill the guardians. So we're gonna have to dig out a killing chamber on either side of the portals, which will look something like this. Now that's basically the nether side all done, so we can head back through. And there's just a couple more things left to do before this farm is done. With the first one being to pillar up to build the AFK platform, which once again will look something like this. And now technically this is all you're supposed to do for the AFK platform, but I had an idea on how to improve it. And it's gonna be with another portal up here. Since without that, there's kind of no easy way to get into the nether to collect up the drops. So this is a slight modification that I'm making. All right, so the portal's all done, we can light it now. Now, but we're not gonna head through just yet since we still have to link it. Oh, well, I guess it just linked itself because my ender chest went through. So I guess we might as well just go through it. And it's gonna put us out right here. Now, obviously when this farm is running, there's gonna be tons of guardians just flowing into here. So I don't wanna come out through this portal because it'll probably kill me. So instead, we're gonna go up on top of the roof. If I can even get up there, here we are. And I'm gonna find a good piece of bedrock to break to get up on top. Okay, 127, nice. Let's write down these coordinates, and then I'll grab out my nether roof kit, which is basically just some ladders and some ender pearls. Okay, now we'll go up, and this piece of bedrock is the one that I marked right here. So let's just place something on top of it to keep track, and then we'll bust out our bedrock breaking kits, which is gonna be a big thing of redstone like this. This is using the redstone lag method, which is a lot easier than the TNT method. And you guys will see how that's done very shortly. But basically, it's a big grid of redstone like this. In the center, I'll place down my lever, and then I'll place down my piston like this with some redstone redstone on top. We'll update the piston, break the redstone. Now we should be good to try this out. Okay, there we go. It worked. Nice. Okay, we now have the bedrock broken and it goes all the way down. Perfect. Okay, let's place a portal right here now and then we'll light it. And because of how portals work in the game, this one should put us up on top of the farm. Let's just make sure. Okay, it does. Nice. And now if we head through this portal again, then it's going to put us back on top of the nether roof. Now just to make sure that everything is working, let's dig all the way back down here. We should end up right on top of the killing chamber. Okay, yep, we did. And this is our access hole to get up onto the roof. It kind of lined up perfectly. So let's just build a little chamber like this so we can fly in and out super easily. Then I'll also do the same thing down below. Let's see, where is it? Right over here. Nice. Okay, everything is all nice and linked up. If we fly all the way up here, then we have access to our portal, which will put us up on top of the farm. Here we go. And then these portals down here are reserved only for the guardians. We do not want to go through these ones when the farm is running, but that leaves us with only two things left to do, with the first one being placing down everything. Wait, hold on. Oh, I need my chest plate. But like I was saying, we have to place down all the soul sand now. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, it's all done. Well, at least the first of the two steps is done. And I can't even get down from here now. Oh, gosh. Oh, I can't wait to be farming these guardians. They deserve to die after all the pain they're putting me through. Okay, but let's fly away real quick. Now, we should only have one step left to go, which is going to be to remove all the dirt. Okay, it should be done now. Let's fly up to the AFK platform and see if it works. Okay, they're spawning. And they are going through the portal. Nice. Okay, yeah, it definitely looks like it's working. Let's go see the nether side. I really hope these portals link, please. Okay, it still works. Let's fly down here. And I already see tons of guardians dying. Yep, look at that. Nice. Let's see. Oh, we already have so much stuff. That was like one minute. Amazing. Look at this. This farm is working really good. But now we can cross guardian off the list. What should we do next? Let's do a magma cube farm. That's also going to be another super useful farm. Farm. But first, we'll head back home. I'll empty out my inventory. We got so much stuff from just one minute of running the farm. That is crazy. But now let's start collecting up all the blocks that we're going to need to build this. And I think I'm going to be building it out of blocks of iron, since my iron farm has been producing me so much of it. I mean, look, these are all shulker boxes of blocks of iron. I will never need to use that much iron. So I might as well just waste all of it and use it as building blocks. I'm going to need 97 stacks of this stuff, which is only three and a half shulker boxes full. I still have so much left. But then on top of that, 
that, I'm also gonna need some white stained glass and everything else. Actually, wait, we are gonna need to spawn some iron golems. So let's make some carved pumpkins real quick. Let's grab my shears and here we go. Okay, nice. We're definitely not gonna need 64, so this should be good. And there we go. But that's everything that we'll need, so let's go build this thing. All right, there's plenty of space up here, but we are gonna have to find a basalt delta to build it in. Wait, what is this enderman doing out here? What? Where did he come from? Wait, so he's holding a crimson nylium block. Did he steal that from my nether hub? Let me go see. I need to investigate if there's any warped nylium missing. Okay, it actually doesn't look like it. That is the weirdest thing. There's just an enderman vibing on the nether roof. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> We'll just leave him be for now. He looks like he's having a good time up there. But like I was saying, we have to find a basalt delta to build this in. Oh, and there's one right here. Wait, there's another enderman? What is going on? How are there so many endermen up here? This guy's holding a little warped fungus this time. Well... They're both just having a good time, so I guess I'll just leave them be. But I think that basalt delta was somewhere over here, right? Yeah, here it is. Okay, this is where we're gonna build the farm. Let's place down all of my materials, and I'm gonna get started on the collection system, which is gonna go right over here. All right, here's all the hoppers and all the chests. And now on top of here, we have to place down a bunch of soul sand with some wither roses on top to kill the magma cubes. Ow. Okay, that's the killing chamber all done. Now we're just gonna have to place glass around all of it, which looks like this. And now we're just gonna have to make a big circle where all the magma cubes are gonna spawn. And that's gonna look like this. Wait, it's already working. <laughs> Let's see if I can lure them into the center here. Come here, friends. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, so unfortunate. You hate to see it. Oh, wait, <laughs> he can still hit me. <laughs> okay, but it is working though. Let's just nudge this guy over. Come on, in you go. There we go. Okay, now let's spawn this iron golem. It's gonna go right in the center right here. Let's see if it works. Okay, nice. And now for safety, we're gonna have to come... Oh gosh, nope, we're not gonna have to do that. That's not very safe. But as I was saying, for safety, we're gonna have to come up here and place a block right on top of his head. Now he's locked in there. And that's actually where the next iron golem's gonna go. So before we do any more layers of this farm, I think we should just get all the iron golems spawned in. Okay, there we have it. All the iron golems for all of the platforms. Wait, and there's more endermen. Where are they coming from? There's four of them now. What is this? <laughs> How are they able to get up here? That makes no sense. Maybe I'll have to investigate that later. But we already have the first platform done, so we just have to do the same thing seven more times. And I'll be back once that's all done. Okay, it's all done, and it looks like it's working pretty good, but I think we might have a bit of a problem here. <laughs> Look at how many endermen there are now. There's so many around here. How are they getting up here? This makes no sense. And they're all holding stuff from a warp forest too. There's like 10 endermen now. I don't know what to do. Well, let's see if this is working. Okay, it definitely is. Nice, all the chests are getting items. So this farm is fully functional, but let's grab our book now, and we can cross off Magma Cube. I think up next, I wanna build a ghast farm, and this is gonna be an enormous farm, so we're gonna have to do quite a bit of we're gathering up materials for it. But first, we'll head back home. And the first ingredient that we have to get is 128 stacks of jack-o'-lanterns. Let's see. Okay, currently I have zero, and I only have six carved pumpkins. This is gonna be great. <laughs> and I don't even have enough pumpkins either. Okay, hold on. Let's go check on my melon and pumpkin farm. Hopefully there's some more pumpkins in there. And there are, but it's honestly not that many. We're gonna need a lot more pumpkins than that. But let's just get started on converting the ones that we already have into carved pumpkins and then into jack-o'-lanterns. Okay, it's been a few days in real life, and I've gotten all of the jack-o'-lanterns that we'll need. This took so long. I ended up having to modify my melon and pumpkin farm to produce more pumpkins, and then it just took forever to convert all of them. It was insane. But we have everything that we'll need on top of all of the other materials as well. So let's go build this farm now. It's gonna be half in the nether, half in the overworld, but the majority of the farm is gonna be in the nether, so we're gonna start with that first. Now, first up, we just have to find a soul sand valley, and look at the amount of endermen there are. <laughs> what is going going on with this? I'm just starting to notice this. Like, it's almost like the more time I spend on the roof, the more endermen get up here. Where are these guys even coming from? But I believe over here, there should be a soul sand valley. Let's see. Yep, there we go. The sky is now blue. And this is where we have to build the farm. So I first need to find a four chunk area that's entirely within the soul sand valley. And I think that right here should be pretty good. So I'll just mark the edges with some torches. Here we go. And then right here at the intersection of these four chunks is where we'll start building. I'll bust out my jack-o'-lanterns. And here we go. This is going to be insane. <laughs> Okay, now it's time to build the overworld part of this farm. Let's come into here. I'll write down my coordinates, and then we can light the portal and head through. We're just gonna have to tear down this portal and then multiply the coordinates that I wrote down earlier by eight. Okay, these are the exact coordinates. So now we'll pillar up. 
Now we're just gonna have to build a portal up here. Something like this. Okay, moment of truth to see if it all works. Um, hello? Let's see. Okay. This doesn't seem to be... Oh, wait, I forgot some redstone dust. Hold on. Let's go like this. <laughs> There we go. It appears as if it's working, but I don't think the water is supposed to do this. Let's give it a little bit to cycle through and see if it works. Okay, yes, it is working, but I just have to reset the buckets real quick. Let's go down here as well. Let's reset this bucket. Okay, nice. Now you might notice the portals aren't getting lit, and that's because I forgot to bring flint and steels with me. <laughs> but everything apart from that looks like it's working. Yeah, nice. Okay, let's light this portal and we'll go back through. Let's grab like three shulker boxes, I think. Let's see here. Do I have any flint? Where did I put that? Let's see. I rarely ever use flint, so I don't really know where it is in my storage system. It might be over here, I think. Yeah. Oh, we actually have quite a bit. Whoa. That was way more than I was expecting. But then we'll come over here and we'll grab some iron, which I also have tons of. And we'll start crafting some flint and steels. Okay, I got carried away and I did six and a half shulker boxes instead. <laughs> that should definitely be enough. And I also brought some chests and some hoppers to slightly expand the storage of it. Since I want this farm to run for as long as possible without having to refill it. But now that we have all that, we'll head back through and then over to the farm, which is in this direction. And then we'll head through this portal. Let's see here. We have to load all of this up right here with flint and steel. Okay. And yeah, it is definitely working. Oh, and it lit the bottom portal too. Nice. Amazing. <laughs> this farm is so genius. All right. So there's only one thing left to do. And that's going to be to light all the main portals down here. I'm kind of scared. I really hope this works. I'm also scared of all these gas too, though. But let's head through and light all these portals. All right. Here's the last portal. And there it is. It's all done. Let's see if it's working. Yeah, it definitely is. Look, we're coming through right here. Let's go in here and let's do one swipe like this. Oh, and there's still coming through. Nice. And it's definitely working. Nice. Well, let's grab our book now and we can cross off ghast. Nice. What else do we have to do? Oh, we have to do a zoglin and also a hoglin. Let's do a combo farm with the two of those. That one should be way simpler than the one we just built, so it should go pretty easy. But first, I'll head back home. I'll empty out all these old shulker boxes. And I've also gone ahead and collected up all the items that I'll need for both of these farms. So let's go build them. Now, this farm has to be built in a crimson forest since that's where hoglin spawn. And we kind of are already in one. So I think I might just build it like right here. Let's gather up all my materials and we'll get to work. First up is the spawning platform, which will look something like this. And now for the collection slash killing chamber. It's going to go right over here, which will look something like this. And that's the Hoglin farm all done. It's super easy. <laughs> now I'll just have to pillar up and build the AFK platform now. And here we go. It looks like it's working. Is it? Yeah. Nice. Oh, it works good too. Nice. All right. Now for the Zoglin farm, it's basically going to be this. But instead of lava, there's going to be a portal to bring them over to the overworld. So let's just repeat the same thing, but instead of lava, we'll put a portal. Okay, and just like the other one, that was extremely easy. But since Hoglin seemed to avoid portals, I had to make it a little bit higher up. This is also my own design, by the way. Well, I guess I took this design and modified it. <laughs> but when I was doing some testing in a creative world, I saw that I had to place it a bit higher up since right down here is going to be the portal. So let's head through and see where it takes us. Oh, I know exactly where this is. We're right next to our cave spider farm. All right, but now how am I going to make this into a Zoglin farm on this side? This is the part that I haven't planned out yet. So we're just going to be winging it. Maybe I'll just make something like this. I might try something similar to the guardian farm. But then we also have to give time for the Hoglins to convert. I don't know. Let's see what I can whip up here. Let's go see if it works. I'm just going to AFK up here for a little bit. Let's see if any Hoglins decide to go through. Uh, so far, it's not looking so good. Wait, here we go. Let's see. Does he go through the portal? Okay, he's going through. Nice. Let's go investigate. Look at all these Zoglins. Oh, wait, there's babies. I'm going to have to put something to get these guys to not come out. But look at all these Zoglins. We've made a Zoglin farm. <laughs> oh, they do two hearts. What? Oh, there's all these babies out here, bro. Come on, go away. There we go. And what do they drop? Do they drop rotten flesh? I think they might. Yeah, they drop rotten flesh. This is a terrible farm. But I said I was going to be farming every single mob today. And that includes the terrible ones like Zoglins. But let's just go up here real quick. And I need to get some wood. And I'm going to have to build a trap door or a slab so the babies can't get out. Let's do just a slab. I think that should be good. Okay, let's go try it one more time and see if it works. I guess I'll place the slab. Oh, we can probably get rid of this sign then and place the slab right here. And then I should be able just to go in and just hit these guys like this. I'm spending way too long on this farm. Let's head back up to the AFK platform now. And we'll wait for a few more of these guys to go through, which they are. Nice. Let's see now. And look, whoa, there's already tons of items. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Whoa, whoa. There's a zombie? Where did you come from? Okay, that was 
low-key terrifying, but we do have tons of Zalans in here, though. They can still hit me, though, but I just have to be a little bit further back. And the babies can't get out, so that's the most important thing. But it looks like we have a fully functioning Zoglin farm. This is the strangest farm. <laughs> oh, and it still gives you raw pork chops. I guess it's not too terrible. But that's the Hoglin and Zoglin farms all done. Let's check this one. Okay, yeah, it's working pretty decently. There's still tons of these guys. Hello. Go in the llama. Go in there. Go. And you. I hate the baby Hoglins. They deserve to die. Now we can head to our book and we can cross off Zoglin and Hoglin. Nice. Now, since we're kind of on the theme of doing cursed and useless farms, let's do another one of those next. That's going to be a zombie villager farm. It's part of the mobs that we have to farm today, so we're going to have to do it. But I have a pretty good idea on how I can do this farm fairly easily. First, I'll just have to empty out my inventory, though. And we're actually not going to need any items for this farm. Actually, wait, we are going to need only one item, and it's going to be a name tag. And I'm going to rename it to Villager Terrorizer. That's going to be for the zombie that's going to convert all of our villagers into zombie villagers. But let's head over to our villager breeder now. Let's see how it's doing. Yes, nice. We have tons of villagers. Now, my plan for this farm is basically going to be to just put a zombie inside of here, and then he's going to convert all the villagers in here to zombie villagers. And then any new villagers that are going to come up here are going to be immediately converted into zombie villagers. And then I guess we could just like break this block right here and farm them. <laughs> so that's the plan. We are going to have to wait for it to become nighttime though. And it is about to become nighttime in about three minutes. So now we wait. Okay. It's nighttime. Let's see here. Are there any zombies? Here's one. Hello, friend. Do you want to be my subject? <laughs> Come here, chase me. Let's lure him all the way over there now. Okay, moment of truth. Here he comes. No, no, no. Come back. No, no, no. These guys. No wonder they're zombies. They have no brains. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's going to get me low. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That was very embarrassing. How could I let that happen? Let's grab another totem because apparently I have a skill issue. Let's try to get another zombie. Here he is. This guy doesn't have a sword this time, so hopefully he won't kill me. Gosh, this is way harder than I expected it would be. Okay, let's just lock him in like this. There we go. So he's locked in here now. And now I should be able to go like this and then just drop him in. Oh, come on. Oh, there's more zombies. Okay, come on. Go right there. There we go. Okay, he's in this spot. And if I just drop him in, then there he goes. Okay, that was way harder than it should have been. And I can't believe that guy popped my totem. That is unbelievable. Villager terrorizer. <laughs> All right, maybe you should aggro on a different villager. Yeah, let's try it now. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's working. There we go. And now it's going to start a chain reaction. Nice. <laughs> this is so fun to watch for some reason. <laughs> Look at all this. We're soon gonna have a thing full of zombie villagers. Look at it. It's so magical. <laughs> I don't know why I get so much pleasure doing this. Maybe something's wrong with me. <laughs> Here's the last one. There we go. It's all zombie villagers now. <laughs> so we should be able to go like this and then farm them. Hello. <laughs> Do they even drop decent XP? I don't know. But look at this. A zombie villager farm. <laughs> Another useless but arguably pretty fun farm. But we can cross it off the list. All right. What's next? We still have to do a silver fish, a stray, a wither, a blaze, ender dragon, and enderman. Now real quick, let's go look at something. If I head over to my end portal and then over to my wither rose farm, which looks like it's still working. Nice. Is this technically an enderman farm since it's using enderman to get wither roses? I think this might count as an enderman farm. What do you guys think though? Leave your answers in the comments. But I am about to decide right now and I'm deciding that yes, this is an enderman farm. <laughs> if you guys don't think so, then I will definitely build a dedicated enderman farm. But I think this serves pretty good as an enderman farm since not only do we get ender pearls, but we also get wither roses. Like right down here. Look at all this. So I think we can safely cross enderman off the list. So that leaves us with only a wither, a silverfish, a stray, a blaze, and then lastly, the ender dragon. Yes, we are building an ender dragon farm today. It's going to be insane. But I think up next, we should build a stray farm. And the design of these farms is actually pretty cool. I think you guys will enjoy it. But first, we'll have to head back to my end gateway, which is right over here. And then I'll head back through and back to my storage system. All right, now we're just going to have to start collecting up all the blocks that we're going to need to build this farm. It's not going to be too many, so I'll just be back once I have all of it. All right, and here is everything that we'll need. It's honestly not going to be too complicated. Now, you guys might be thinking that I'm just going to build a normal mob spawner in a snowy plains. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I love when that happens. One moment while I rebuild. 
world. Dude, it destroyed a lot, actually. Disappointment, sadness, agony, pain. Okay, everything is all fixed. Wait, and there we go. <laughs> oh, creepers are so annoying. But as I was saying, you guys might just be expecting me to go to a snowy plains biome and build a normal mob spawner, since after all, that is where strays spawn. But that's actually not the easiest way to do this. We can actually convert normal skeletons into strays with powdered snow. So I'm just going to be building a normal skeleton spawner farm and then using some powdered snow to turn them into strays. It's going to be pretty straightforward, but the hardest part is definitely going to be finding a skeleton spawner. So let's head down into some caves. <gasps> oh, a spawner. Ah, there's so many mobs. Let's see. What kind of spawner is it? <gasps> it's a skeleton spawner. Okay, hold on. Let's just spam torches everywhere in here. Ah, there's so many skeletons. <laughs> Okay. Wow. We finally found one. Let's expand it into a spawner farm now. This should be pretty easy. Okay. It's all been expanded. So I'll just have to close up the walls up here and we'll go something like this. Okay. Now down here, we're going to have to place some water, something like this. And then I'll bring it into the center over here. I've built many spawner farms before, so this should go pretty easily. Okay. Nice. It's all funneling into the center block right here. So now I guess what I'll do is I'll have it drop down like this. This is also going to be my own design for this farm, so it might be a little cursed. I think I have an idea on how to make it a little bit less cursed. And I'll craft up a stair like this. We'll place the stair like right here. And I guess I might as well build a little drop shoot right here. But since they're falling into powdered snow, they won't be taking fall damage anyways. So I don't think it's super important for them to fall a super long distance. Maybe something like this would be fine. Let's go like down here, maybe. And I think this should be good. Let's place a hopper and a chest down here. Let's go like this and like this. On top, I'll do a slab and then a slab right here as well. And then maybe I'll do powdered snow hmm, right here. Or should I do it right here? Yeah, let's try it right there. Let's just see what happens. I don't even know. <laughs> I'll do a trap door instead. We'll go like that. Nice. Okay. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's come back into here. Then I'll have to break all the torches. Here we go. And they're spawning. Nice. Let's see if they're able to fall down. Wait, no, they're fighting each other. <laughs> okay, well, they are able to fall down, but they're going to kill each other, though. <laughs> Let me just see here. Yeah, they are falling down. Okay, nice. They're all fighting each other, though. Guys, <laughs> play nice. <laughs> And they're going to start shaking and eventually they'll turn into strays. Oh, yep. One just turned into one. Yeah, look, they're all turning into strays. Nice. Let's just finish blocking all this off right here. And look at that. If I get rid of the powdered snow, you'll be able to see. Yeah, look, they're all strays. Let's kill them now. Look at that. We're getting loot from strays. We're getting slowness arrows. This is a pretty cool farm, to be honest. But now the last step for this farm is just going to be to build an access tunnel to it. Since right now we are kind of in some random cave. So let's just build a staircase going up here. There we go. Nice. Here we are. Where are we? Oh yeah, look. Here's our warden farm. Here's the phantom farm. We're honestly not too far away from everything, but let's just spend a bit of time expanding the staircase to make it a little bit more usable. And I'll be back once it's all done. Okay, and there we have it. The farm is all done. And it actually works fairly decently too. But since we just finished farming the strays, we can cross them off the list. And that only leaves us with a few things left to do. We have to do a blaze farm, an ender dragon farm, a silverfish farm, and a wither farm. Let's do our blaze farm next. It's kind of surprising that I have haven't built a blaze farm in this world yet. <laughs> Out of all the farms I have, I don't have one, which is really weird. And blaze rods are also super useful too, so I'll definitely be using this farm in the future. But first, like always, we'll fly back home, and I'll empty out all this garbage, and I'll start collecting up everything that I'll need to build this blaze farm. It's just gonna be a ton of white stained glass, some vines, and everything else. So now, like usual, let's go build this thing. But wait a minute. I just realized I don't have a way to access the nether from my nether hub. How am I gonna get out of here? Um, I guess for the time being, I could just break out like this. Maybe I'll go on this side, actually. Hold on. I'm gonna need a better system in the future, though. If you guys have any suggestions on what I should do, please let me know. Should I build, like, a super cool door? Should I just be crazy and put a map art in front of it? What should I do? But that's besides the point. Now that we're in the nether, we have to find a fortress. And what's really strange about my nether spawn is that there's actually no fortresses nearby at all. They're all super far away. And I also don't even know where they are either, so we're just gonna have to fly around and try to find one. Let's see here. Where are the fortresses? Ooh, okay. A fortress. Let's see if we can find any exposed blaze spawners. Oh, this one looks like it might be good. Yeah, it is pretty exposed. First, I'll start with clearing out a space around the entire spawner. Hey, stop it, bro. Okay, but now that we have this all cleared out, it's time to build the chamber that's going to surround all of this. We're going to place glass all along the floor like this. And then we're going to leave room in the center for a drop shoot, something like this. And then around it, we'll build up some walls. 
and I've run out of glass. I didn't bring enough with me, but look at the amount of blazes. This is just ridiculous. But I think what we should do here is write down the coordinates of this farm. Let's do something like this. And then I guess since we can't really do much more building right now, Ooh, hold on. Ouch. Ow. But as I was saying, since I can't really do much more building right now because I'm out of glass, let's build an access to this farm. And I'm going to be accessing it through the nether roof. So let's just make our way up here real quick. 127. Okay, nice. Let's write down the exact coordinates of this piece of bedrock. There we go. Let's do ladders going all the way up like this. I have my ender pearl at the ready. And here we go. Okay, nice. Oh, we're actually not too far away from everything else. That's good. Let's grab out my bedrock breaking kit now, which is this. And we'll get everything set up to break that piece of bedrock. There we go. And it worked. Nice. <laughs> and I guess we'll mark it with a pillar like this, since that way we'll be able to see it. And yeah, that should be good. Okay, let's head back and grab some more glass. All right, here we go. Let's load it up, grab some more rockets, and we'll head back. Okay, here's what I marked down earlier, and we'll head back down. Let's renew our fire resistance, bust out the rest of my glass, and we'll keep working. There we have it. Here's our blaze farm. It looks like it's working very well, too. Nice. Let's see. Yeah, look at how many blaze rods we have already. This is so good. Let's grab out our book, and we can cross off blaze. And that leads us with just three mobs. The ender dragon and wither, and the silverfish. We're gonna have to build a silverfish farm today, guys. As much as I don't want to, I said I would farm every single mob, and that includes silverfish. So that's gonna be our next farm. But first, like always, we'll fly back home, analyze the enderman situation. It looks like they're starting to spread out. Yeah, look, they're all spreading out. <laughs> that is so weird. But like always, we'll empty out our inventory. Now, we're only gonna need a few items to to build this farm. Oh wait, since we just got all these blaze rods, this is actually going to be perfect because we're going to have to craft up quite a few eyes of ender. Let's go like this. There we go. And I don't think I'll really need anything else. Maybe I'll need some water. Let's bring this with me. And yeah, that should be it. Oh, when it's raining, this is perfect. I can use my riptide tridents. I've been waiting for the day that I could use this thing. So now we're just going to have to go find another stronghold. My current stronghold is over in this direction. So I guess I'll go over here to find another one. It has to be one that we haven't been to yet. Okay, this should be far enough away. Let's fly down here and throw an eye and see where it takes us. Let's see. Oh, okay. This is going to be a new one. Nice. It's off in this direction. Just to zoom over there with my trident. And let's try like right here. Oh, it's in this direction now. We're getting a bit closer. What about right here? Yes. Okay. It's right here. It's these four chunks. I guess I'll try this chunk right here. Let's go to four, four in the chunk and then we'll dig down. Oh, yep, here's the stronghold. Hello. Okay, now to find the portal room. Here it is. Okay. Now, normally I would break this silverfish spawner, but since we're going to be building a silverfish farm, then I can't. This is going to be the most annoying farm to build, I think. But let's get to work on it. It's basically just going to be a normal spawner farm, and I just have to work around the portal right here. But since this room is already cleared out, then it should be pretty straightforward to build this. Ow! Okay, we have a nice dark room <laughs> with lots of annoying silverfish. And let's see if I can build some sort of a farm. I'm going to need some water for this. Let's place one right here. Go away. They're all spawning. Oh my gosh. Stop it. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> okay. Let's keep working on this farm. <laughs> so cursed. And now I think this should be a fairly decent farm, despite it being very cursed. Let's just kill all these guys in here real quick. Go away. Thank you very much. And then we'll extend this area out right here. And look at this. They're getting funneled right towards me. <laughs> okay, let's close all this off, though. Maybe I'll leave that open so I can see what's going on. And then, how should I do this? Maybe I'll go something like this. It's actually kind of difficult to design this. Or maybe I'll just have it be like this. Like, it's just a pit where they go into. And then I can just hit them from here because they can't reach me. I think that might be the best design. Wait, one second. Oh, they can get up. Hold on. Let's make all this one block taller. Let's wait for some more to spawn. Oh, yep, here they come. Hello. And they all get funneled into here. And then all I have to do is this. Nice. <laughs> I think they drop fairly decent XP too. So maybe it's not all terrible. Let's make it a little bit nicer though. Let's add some stairs like this. There we go. Now it's a bit more functional. There we go. <laughs> nice. We have a silverfish farm. Let's grab our book and we can cross it off. Okay, nice. Now just to make it a bit easier to head back home, I'm going to come up here and I'll fill in the portal like this. Look at all these silverfish. All right. I made three Endermen angry. How is that even possible? Oh my gosh. Jeez. One and a half hearts. Oh, I'm not playing very well today. <laughs> 
but we'll fly back through and then back to our house. Now with the completion of the silverfish farm, it just leaves us with two farms left to build. And those are probably going to be the best and most fun to build farms. It's going to be a wither farm and an ender dragon farm. I can't wait to build both of those. They're going to be so cool. But like always, let's empty out our inventory, kill a pesky zombie, and I'll start collecting up all the blocks that we'll need to build this. Both farms have to be built in the end, so I'm just going to build them both at once. But they are going to require an insane amount of materials, so let's get to work collecting up all of it. All right, and after a bit of work, here are all the materials that we'll need. I'm kind of excited to build these farms. It's going to be so cool. But let's head to the end and build them. I'm going to start with the wither farm first, since it's quite a bit smaller than the ender dragon farm. But let's head down here, and then we'll head through the portal, and then over to the main end fountain, since this is where the farm's going to be built. And now the first step is to clear out a pretty large area around this entire end fountain. Okay, here's the giant area all cleared out. This is where we'll be building the wither farm. It's basically going to be the same way that I've always killed my withers, which is going to be in the bedrock up here. Except this time, everything will be automatic. So let's just grab out all my materials here, and we'll grab everything that we need to build this. Okay, first up is going to be some redstone circuitry down here, which I'll just go ahead and build real quick. And here's how all the redstone stuff is looking down here so far. We only have a few things left to do, with the first one being placing a hopper minecart right here. And then we're going to have to push a block down into it. And then we'll go like this. Nice. Now, next up on top of this block, we're going to have to place 24 minecarts. And that's basically so the wither takes entity cramming damage and dies way faster. Because if it was just suffocating in the bedrock, then it would take like 10 minutes for it to die. So these minecarts are going to make sure that it goes a whole lot faster. Okay, 24 minecarts. Let's go like this now. And nice. Okay, looks like it's working here. I need to not touch that though. <laughs> and now we're just going to have to do a bit more building over here now. All right, and that's basically it now. The farm is practically complete. Now we just have to power the farm. That's going to be with all of this stuff. <laughs> Inside of here, I'll add all the soul sand. And up in these droppers, I'll add all of the wither skeleton skulls. But the first step is going to be to click this button right here. And that will throw us four items like this. Then we can get inside of here and we can place down all of this stuff. Wait, hold on. We have to have that placed and then we press the button. There we go. Now there's a wither spawning. And then we'll just place this stuff again. And if I go into free cam real quick, we'll see the wither is going to spawn. Hopefully. Okay and it'll start dying. But yeah, look at that. It's like basically almost dead now. And since we have all this place down, it should just respawn a wither automatically. Yeah, and there we go. The farm is functional. <laughs> nice. This is so cool. <laughs> but we'll turn the farm off. I'll break all these blocks right here and we'll get everything back in working order. Okay, nice. Look at that. Three nether stars in basically no time at all. That's our wither farm all complete. So since we have this farm all done now, we can head to our book and we can cross wither off the list. That leaves us with only one mob left to farm today. And that's going to be the ender dragon. And that's what all the rest of these materials are for. So let's get to work on building it. I'm going to start with all the stuff around the center and fountain right here and it's basically just going to be a complex mess of pistons sticky pistons and a whole bunch of different water streams to push me all around the fountain Okay, I got a bit carried away and I actually ended up building the redstone stuff on the top part of the farm as well. But we still have to complete the bubble column, which will go right here. Okay, let's go all the way down. Oh, I'm going to have to break this soul sand. We'll place that right here. We'll place our kelp and then grow it with some bone meal. Okay, we're at the proper height. Nice. Let's come all the way up here. And there we go. Nice. Everything should be built correctly now. But the farm isn't done. We still have so much to do. But that's just that part of the farm that's done. <laughs> all right, time for the next step. And that's going to be to grab all my white stained glass, head up to the very top of the farm. And this is where we're going to build the collection area that's going to collect all the XP that the dragon drops. And it's going to funnel it all the way down here to where I'll be standing in the farm. And it's just going to be a giant white stained glass platform with a bunch of water on it. Something like this. A massive platform to collect all the XP. But you might notice right here that there's an obsidian block in the center. And that's because right above here, we're going to be building a TNT duper. And that's basically what's going to be killing the dragon. As the farm is running, I'm going to be standing right here below this block. And the dragon's going to be continually flying down trying to attack me. But since there's going to be TNT constantly exploding on this block, then it's going to be damaging the dragon and also preventing it from getting too close to me. So it's a pretty similar mechanic to killing it with beds, but slightly different and 
and instead we're doing it with TNT. But like I said before, we're gonna have to build a TNT duper on top of this. So let's pillar up and go build it. Okay, it's almost ready. We just have to place a detector rail right here, place a piston, my minecart, and then push it in like this. Nice, okay. Everything is all primed and ready to go. Let's fly up here and flick this lever and it's working, nice. Yep, check it out, awesome. Okay, we're not gonna need that right now, so I'll turn it off. But as you can see, that's where the TNT is gonna be exploding. But now this is the core of the farm all done and we should probably actually give it a quick test. Let's fly up here and we'll go right here, take off my boots. And let's see if it works. It should send us all the way up to the top of the farm. Oh, wait. I, I think it doesn't work with my elytra either. Come on. <laughs> let's try it without the elytra this time. Please work. Okay, let's see here. Like this, like this. Nice. It sends us up and then across. Oh, normally this would be activated, but there's no daylight sensor detecting the dragon, so it's not. But we'll pretend that it takes me all the way up here. And then also right here is where we're going to have all of our end crystals, which will replenish us. We'll be up on top of this. And then once the dragon dies, we'll get pushed over here. And then we'll get sent back down. And the cycle repeats. Wait, oh, it's a little bit broken sometimes. It's okay. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll probably work better once the dragons actually spawn, because there are some daylight sensors that do some weird things. But now there's only one thing left to do to finish off this farm. And that's gonna be to find the four highest pillars. So we have one right here, one right here, one right here, and one right here. And we're gonna have to build some TNT dupers to get rid of these end crystals when the dragon respawns. Since otherwise the dragon will be able to heal as it's being damaged. And we definitely don't want that. But first we have to build a mechanism to detect when the dragon is respawned. And that's gonna go at this pillar right here. So let's get to work. It's gonna be a little complicated though, so I'll be back once I have it done. Okay, I have all the redstone lines run to all the towers. We're gonna have one right here. This is going to be the first, second, third, and fourth. And then down here is going to be the sensing circuit. Now, if you see right here, we have a skulk sensor, but then below it, we have a slab. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to come over here like this. There we go. We're going to place a wall like this. <laughs> Let's get rid of all this stuff. Now we're going to head back up here, grab out my boat, and then I'll place down a boat right here and drive it into this wall. Let me just make sure that the hitboxes are properly aligned. Okay, and this should be good. Let's get out and we'll break this wall. And that's the sensing circuit all done. Now basically what's going to happen is when the dragon gets respawned, this crystal is going to break and then replace. And this boat is at the perfect distance, so it's going to get moved by the crystal, but it's not going to get broken. If you know how boats kind of go like this when they're about to break, that's exactly what's going to happen with this boat. And then the skulk sensor is going to detect that, and it's going to send out a signal to all of our TNT dupers, and it'll break the four tallest crystals. And that's basically how this part of the dragon farm works. But we only have a few things left to do, and the main one is going to be to build these TNT dupers. So let's get to work on that, and I'll be back once I have all four dupers all done. Okay, now that's basically the farm complete. I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I have to do? I don't think so. That should be everything all complete. I'm so scared. I really hope this works. I think there's only one thing left to do, and that's to try it out. Let's grab all of our end crystals, though, and we are gonna have to stock up this farm real quick. Let's fly up here to this chest. Let's load up all this into here, except for four of them, since we need four to respawn the dragon, and then I'll fly up here and turn on the TNT duper. Is it working? Nice. Okay, here goes nothing. I hope this works. Let's head down here to the start of the farm, which is right here. I'll take off my boots and put on my chest plates. Let's make sure I'm all healed up, and now basically what I have to do is open this trap door and then hold right click. Let's do it. Okay, it's placing down all the stuff. And this turns into a bubble column. Nice. And we can hear the dragons respawning. I'm gonna go into free cam so we can see it work real quick. And you see all this stuff is respawning now. And then as this last crystal respawns, it's gonna shake this boat. There we go. And that sends a signal to all the TNT dupers. Okay, they blew up all the towers. Yep, and here's the dragon. Nice. Now, it's trying to attack me, but you can see that it keeps getting blown higher and higher up. So it's never able to land, so it just keeps circling around and getting damaged by the TNT. But it's almost dead here, and it should send us back through once it's done. Yeah, and it sends us back through. Nice. I'm not gonna place any end crystals, though. Okay, and then we'll just exit it like this. Nice. <laughs> but there we have it. Those are all the farms complete. But now, there's only one thing left to do today, and that's gonna be to AFK test every single farm that we built. We started with the Ender Dragon farm, and we saw that it got me about two levels, even though we are at very high levels, though, so it's not very representative of how it works. So let's go test all the other farms now. I'm not gonna bore you guys with AFKing at all these farms, so I'll be back once I have everything. I'm basically gonna AFK for 15 minutes at every single farm, and collect up all the drops that we get from each of them. And then once I'm back, we'll compare all the drops, and we'll see which farms are good and which ones are garbage. I kinda already know which ones are gonna be garbage. <laughs> but we'll start our AFK test with the first farm that we built 
and that's gonna be our drown farm. Okay, here we go. This is quite a fun angle. <laughs> okay, and after lots and lots of AFK tests, here is all the materials that we got from all the farms. We'll start with the drown farm. Honestly, not too bad. I got two Nautilus shells, a trident, and only nine copper. As for the gas farm though, that was a lot better. I got tons of gas tiers and almost an entire shulker box of gunpowder in just 15 minutes. The magma cube farm was also pretty good. This is what I got from the zombie villager farm. <laughs> it only produced one zombie villager in 15 minutes. <laughs> this was the slime farm, which was pretty good. This was the silverfish farm. It doesn't give you anything. <laughs> this was the phantom farm. 27 phantom membranes. That's not too bad. But now for the guardian farm. This one was insane. I got one, two, three, and a little bit extra in shulker boxes of prismarine shards. Also got one shulker box and a bit extra of prismarine crystals. I got an entire shulker box and a bit extra of raw cod and a stack and a half of ink sacks. This one was the most productive farm. It gave me so many items. But right here was the stray farm. Honestly, not too bad. This was the blaze farm almost five stacks of blaze rods, which is pretty good. This is what I got from the hoglin farm. This one's from the zoglin farm. This is what we got from the mob grinder we built in the desert. This is what I got from the warden farm in just 15 minutes. But the entire time that we were working on all the other farms, this is how much I got from it. But this was the 15 minute AFK test, just 16. And then lastly, we got 24 withers in 15 minutes at the wither farm. And those were all the farms that we built today. Some of them are extremely good, like the guardian farm and others, not so much. <laughs> but I had so much fun building all these farms today with you guys, and some of them are actually going to be extremely useful. But that's going to be all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!